Norman Baker was an ordinary person just like you and I. Very, very smooth, very comfortable, very relaxed. He quit high school as a sophomore, and then uh, he went across the country and put in a, a kind of a show that he could pe tell people's minds, and that was so important to him. And uh, this went on for about two or three years. And uh, this man uh, thought he could cure cancer, but he had no idea that he could do this at this time. And uh, his whole family uh, thought that he was a little bit loony. And then he thought, I need a radio station. So in 1925, he put up uh, on top of the Mark Twain Hill, the towers up there for the radio station. And he wanted 50,000 watts. Well, the government said, you're going to have only 5,000 watts. Well, then after 5 o'clock, when everybody else went home in Washington, D.C., he turned her up to 25,000 watts. He didn't like the, the government whatsoever. And uh, he thought, well, maybe I better come out with something really enterprising. And so he found a man down at Taylorville, Illinois. That's south of Springfield. Uh, and this guy was named Dr. Hoxie. And Dr. Hoxie uh, talked to Baker, and he came up here with Baker, and he opened up the hospital, number one. Every person that came in had a sheet written up, cancer, cancer, cancer. And uh, some of them went home, and they were cured. But the doctors at the university hospitals at that time said, they found out that it wasn't cancer in that first place, it was something else that was curable. And here's for $50, here's put this medicine and salve and whatever it is on this sore and it'll clear it up, and it did. And so he always said, well, hey, cancer is curable, but it wasn't cancer. And so this really uh, got the AMA, the American uh, he called them the American Meat Cutters Association, what he called the AMA. And uh, this thing got out of control with him, and uh, he, uh, he got sued by the doctors in this county. And uh, so he countered sued, and it went back and forth. There were 12 different lawsuits put through, and he fought every one of them with lawsuits. And he didn't like the doctors coming in and, and taking care of his business because that was his business. And in, in 1931, they came in here with the car loads and the bus loads. And he had to build another hospital, two of them there. And uh, this got quite exciting for him because he couldn't keep up with the patients coming in. And downtown, uh, they were relishing at that time. That was a depression. But boy, things were hopping in here for all the stores selling. And uh, the open sores and the, uh, and the blood the water out of the fountains uh, was open sores. And uh, this was not what the people downtown liked to see. And so this was quite a thing that they had to try to fix, but they couldn't fix it because the people had open sores that walked up and down the sidewalks. It was that many people. Uh, <clears throat> about that time he came up uh, with a cure for it, either injection or taken internally. It was carbolic acid, glycerin, with a touch of peppermint. And uh, that was about it. And that was, that was all it took. And so th they drank that, and they injected it into them. And they got well, some of them. Well, they never had cancer to begin with. And that's what the doctors picked up and found out that he was illegal. So they, they sued him. Manus Johnson was the man you're referring to out of Galesburg, Illinois. And then <clears throat> they told him to come to Muscatine and see Dr. Baker. Well, he came over here and uh, took a look at his head, and he said, you got cancer. And so uh, this guy said, well, can you take care of it? And he said, sure, we can. And so just before they operated on him, on May the 12th, 1930, I believe it was, up at Mark Twain Hill on top of the, where the studio was, they said, tonight, we're going to have Hoxie up, not Hoxie, but his doctor, and we're going to take this Manus Johnson's top of his head off. Well, that excited the whole Muscatine, plus 50 miles from around here, 
And so the paper says there were 11,000 people up on top of that hill. Several women, when they walked by this Dr. Hoxie and saw that open sore head, several, three women passed out right up there on the top of the hill. Well then, nobody believed him. <clears throat> and Dr. Hoxie said, okay. He says, we're gonna have the governor of Iowa here. And he came over on Memorial Day. <clears throat> and he went out to the park. And Baker says, now ladies and gentlemen, I want you to come to Weed Park out here about 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, the paper says between 11 and 22,000 people came here. One paper said 50,000 people. And they, were, they, they came up from every place. And they brought Dr. Hoxie up on the, the bandstand that was built in 1928, I believe. And, uh, and they showed, and he unwrapped that top of that head, and he took off the top bone up there, and that's where you can also see the, the brains in there or the top of the head, the cranium. And several women passed out up there, and they had to have the ambulance and take those women out of there. So it was a very true story, and uh, this Mandis Johnson, he lived to be another 35 years on top of that. So it wasn't cancer, it was something else, and uh, they cured it. You see, he got ran out of Muscatine, and that's the reason he was in Florida. And he, uh, he decided that he wanted to own a boat, and he bought a yacht of Jay Gould, Jay Gould was a railroad baron of the United States at that time. And he lived on that uh, boat uh, for about three years, Baker did. And uh, he bought it for $113,000, $113.13. Yes, when he died in Florida, they put him on a train, the box, and sent it to Fort Madison, Iowa. And the funeral director here uh, bought uh, or brought his ambulance down to Fort Madison and hauled the body back. And uh, when he got him back, <clears throat> the body, why, he says, now he, he says, somebody needs to get the pallbearers lined up. Well, they couldn't get any pallbearers. So where do you think they came to? They came to Muscatine Community College. <laughs> and he came out with, uh, the undertaker came out here with six $5 bills, and they walked into a class out here, and he said, I got $5 if you'll come down tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock, the funeral home, uh, to carry a casket to the cemetery. So he got them. And then he had to get a, he had to get a, a director that would give some words about him. None of the pastors here in Muscatine would do anything. But he got a young pastor from, well, the Methodist Church, who had just moved here about three months ahead of that. And uh, he asked him if he would come down, and he said, well, okay. He says, when does the family want to see me? He says, the family doesn't want to see you. He says, uh, they just want you to come down and say a few words. How did how he get, how'd yeah. he get the purple yeah. idea? Well, he, uh, he thought, well, now what can I, what can I do unusually? And uh, by golly, how about a purple suit? So he had a purple suit, and then he thought, well, gee, I want to go out to, at nightclubs and so forth around here. So he got a white suit to make it more formal. And then he put a tie on, like, like I've got on here. And you notice that horseshoe. Well, that horseshoe upside down means bad luck. That was Norman Baker.